In terms of, in terms of, shake his hand. Give him a shake. In terms of the beating, can you show me a hadith, sir, where it says that you just beat them lightly? Anything? Show us. Anything shows your historical evidence. And actually, I do know that Arabic in that situation is darabal, which means to scourge. You mean like you hit an animal, you hit a dog. Okay. Mm. Well, if anything, we don't have anything. Don't be rude. Don't be rude. Okay. Yeah. We don't have anything to say. We don't have anything uh, that says that it's that that, that she's beaten lightly. But what does the Prophet say about that? He said. Those people who strike their wives are not the best of you. In another verse, version of the hadith in the Mustadrik of Al-Hakam and Naysaburi, he says, The best of you will not strike your wives. And in Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet says, let one of you, let none of you strike his wife like he'd strike a slave and then go and sleep with her at the end of the day. And in his final sermon, his final khutbah at Hajj, what is one of the things the Prophet says? He says, Fear God as concerns your wives because you have taken them as a trust from God. They're, they're in your trust. And he says, only if they do commit what's called, what he says is fahisha mubayyina, an egregious, egregious, uh, you know, inappropriate behavior, egregious fahisha. Then strike them, but what? Only strike them darb ghayr mubarrih, in a way that leaves no mark, that causes no harm. So that's the sunnah of the Prophet, that we have to, that that through which we read this verse, and through which Every Islamic school of thought would read this verse. Which is why in the various schools of law, and if you, any, you now, I, I see a lot of you are students here, you know um, how complicated fiqh is. You know how many different opinions, like for example in the Hanafi Madhab, you can have, you know, Zahir uh, Riwaya, and you have the the opinion of Imam Abi, Abi, Abi Hanifa, the opinion of Abu Yusuf, the opinion of Muhammad bin Hassan Shibani, the opinion of Zufar bin Hudayl, of all these opinions. So, fiqh is very complicated. But across the, the different madhabs, there's, a, there's the same theme over and over again. You can only strike your wife lightly, in a way that causes no harm. If you cause her harm, you're liable for the dia. You're liable for compensating her for injuries. And according to um, every school except the Hanafi school, the, a judge, if a wife goes to a judge and says, my husband's beating me, and there's witnesses or evidence that the husband's beating her or the, the husband confesses, the judge can do what's called tafriq. He can end the marriage legally. And the wife will get to keep her mahar, and the husband has to pay her nafaka until her idda ends, and the marriage is over. This is the Islam you don't hear about on PBS or the BBC. Let's go to the Quran again, shall we? Let's go to 434. Surah 434. Yeah. Beat but them anyway. lightly. Yeah, right. Beat them. It doesn't say beat them either. It doesn't say beat them either. You're brainwashed. I blame him, not you. I blame him on the letter there. Okay. Anyway, carry on. Does it not say beat them? Anybody here in Arabic? No. Speaker? It doesn't. Okay. 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 Bring up the Quran. And you can beat them. Exodus 21, 20 through 21, gives instruction on how to beat your slaves. If a man beats his male or female slave with a rod and the slave dies as a direct result, he must be punished. But he is not to be punished if the slave gets up after a day or two, since the slave is his property. You can thrash them within inches of their lives, but make sure you don't directly kill them. And you can beat them. And remember, why bashing is haram? Here in these verses, the issue of the beating is mentioned in these verses, but the understanding is not my understanding, nor is it yours. The understanding of the Sahaba. That does not mean right 
the Quran has told me I'm allowed to bash a woman, bring my baseball bat, let me batter. No, that is absolutely haram. Do you know that a marriage can be nullified by the group of ulama if a husband has bashed his wife? If that was permissible, why then would it be allowed to nullify the marriage? Just through him having beaten her, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So those people who are going around saying the Quran allows a man to beat a woman, they don't know what they're talking about. The Quran says that when as a last resort, a woman is not listening and she does not want to look at you when you are talking to her, you may draw her attention by tapping her. That is the term. Barb does not necessarily mean to go out and beat and thump and thud. If that was the case, we would have read so many ahadith of the Sahaba having done that. Radiallahu anhum. They didn't do that. But when we read the ahadith, they used a siwak. Do you know what is a siwak? A small stick which is used to clean the teeth compared to the baseball bats that we are using today. A small stick that is used to clean the teeth that was only used to draw the attention of the women. That was how they understood wadribu hunna. That is how they understood it. So why should we then try and say, no, the Quran doesn't have that verse. When we go and speak to those modernists and those people who want to now delete verses of the Quran, don't deny it. Say, look, the understanding is the understanding of the Sahaba. And also over and above that, a woman who's been bashed, you have the right to apply to the ulama, to the bodies, to the ulama authorities in the Muslim countries, to the courts. And that marriage will be nullified on those grounds. If it was permissible, how could it have been nullified? Carry on. Exodus 21, 20 through 21 gives instruction on how to beat your slaves. If a man beats his male or female slave with a rod and the slave dies as a direct result, he must be punished. But he is not to be punished if the slave gets up after a day or two, since the slave is his property. You can thrash them within inches of their lives, but make sure you don't directly kill them. And you can beat them. Do you think it's wrong to kill women, innocent women and children? Every fiber of my being. Right. Why does Jesus in your Bible order the slaughter of women, babies and children in 1 Samuel 15? Do you condemn that? You're very keen to get me onto the Old Testament. Do you condemn that? Answer the question. See how she's running away.